see on the screen at the moment what are we going to be looking at today, which is an alternative use for the, um, the foam produced by the physical water in view. So let's get straight in and have a look at where we're going to start. So to start, I'm going to create a, a little terrain with some, with some uh, depressions in to form the, the ponds. So I'm going to use a terrain. And the first thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to resize it down to, say, 30 meters, just so we can handle um, the dimensions quite simply. So I'm going to double click the terrain. And I'm going to switch off zero edges. And I'm going to go straight into the function graph and have a look at how we're going to produce our little terrain very, very quickly, just by changing the simple fractal to the eroded Rocky Mountain fractal. I don't want separate mountains. I'll just have one pond, maybe. Let's just see what we get. So the first thing we have to do is increase the scale of this uh, terrain. And we will invert it. So it's going to be difficult to handle, so maybe zero edges would have been the way to go. Okay, so we've got an isolated little pond. We just rotate it and have a look at what we've got. And let's have a look at how it looks in our scene. So if we do a quick preview render, you can see we've got some nice erosion and, and features going on in there, which might look good in the middle of a little pond. Remember, we can always go back into the terrain and we could maybe look at um, lowering certain portions. Oh, hey, that's too much. Let's turn the flow right down so that we get a simpler and we want to change the fall off back to zero so that we get a much smoother um, brush so we can alter and edit our pond and just make it a little bit lower if we want to. And we could always choose to smooth these areas. But anyway, getting back to what we're supposed to be doing. So we have our pond and I'm just going to use a, a view plane. And I'm going to size it to the same as the terrain, which was 30 meters. And we'll raise it up and see what we've got. Okay, So you can see as the plane comes up. The pond is essentially filling with water. That's quite nice. We've got a little island in the middle. So to get on with the water material, let's make sure the plane is selected. We're going to right click. We're going to load a material. And we're going to look at the physical seawater. So you can see straight away the water's come in and we've got all of this foam going on. Remember that the foam is attached to the distance to the surface below. So it's going to follow... Um, any features which approach that that plane. So I'm going to right click on the foam layer in the physical water, edit that function. We don't need to worry about the foam for the moment. We want the foam. We could reduce it down so we get a, a tighter edge so we can see what we're looking at a little bit more. Okay. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to edit the color of the foam. At the moment, it's constant color, which is white. I'm going to change that constant number or constant, yeah, the constant number to a noise output. And what I find uh, quite nice in this particular um, application is either clumps, which is in the noise section of the of the nodes or watercress. I'm going to go with clumps on this occasion. I'm going to load a color map. I'm just going to go for two shades of, well, two or three shades of green in this particular one. So we can see already the green showing up, but it is a little bit too green. So just to combat that, I'm just going to reset that color. That's a little bit better. Let's just do a quick sample render. So you can see we've got the clumping going on all around the edge. It's maybe a little bit too big. So we'll go back to that function and we'll just reduce the scale of it a wee bit. Okay. 
The one thing I'm going to do to make my life easier, to make this material much more flexible, is to just publish the parameter for the coastal foam depth. That's the determining slider for how much we're going to get. So if I increase that number, you can see that the, the pond scum, as it were, extends over the whole of the surface. So I'm just going to click, this is a left click, on coast foam depth, and I'm going to publish that parameter. And I'm going to call this scum, because we call it pond scum in, in the UK. And the group, again, I'm going to call scum. So, OK. And while I'm here, I'm going to publish the colour map. I call that scum colour. And it's still in the group of scum, so we can just quickly see what we've achieved. So the publish parameters are now at the front. This means that we can control um, the amount of scum from the front end instead of constantly having to bounce back into the function editor. It may be a good idea, whilst we're looking at that, to look at the clumps and the scale of the clumps. So let's publish that parameter while we are looking at this. So scum scale still in the scum section because that's all we're editing at the moment and there we go we've now got the scale of the of the texture itself depends on the size of your pond depends on the um the effect that you're looking for but as you can see we now have a nice little ring of, of pond weed scum whatever you want to call it on our little pond surface um, I hope you find that useful. Obviously, this can be uh, looked at in terms of maybe dirt floating on the water or ice or snow laying on the water. It's entirely up to you. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to check us out on social media and check YouTube regularly for further tips and tricks from Eon Software. Thank you. Bye-bye.